Hey everybody, Star Six Wars One here, and welcome to the next Persona 3 vs. Eleven Eyes Villains category. For this one, we are taking a look at the main, the first part of the main villain for the series, Ryoji vs. Lizette. Now, before I continue on, there are going to be major spoilers for both series. You have been warned. Now, with that out of the way, um, first up, let's go with the much easier of the two to talk about, Lizette. Now, Lizette in the anime basically amounts to nothing. You learn very little of her past, except she's an amnesic Liz Lizalot, the main villain. That's really the extent of the story with Lizalette. I'll get more into her back the backstory of the anime with in the next video with when I talk about Liz a lot because that it's more major to her however I do want to bring up something although she's a one no character in the anime the visual novel is much crueler to her I'm putting this in the nicest way possible because oh god I'm gonna be honest, her backstory in the visual novel is cruel and unusual. And quite frankly, makes sure that it's just very, very different. And it's just unpleasant to read through. And I had to read a wiki to find this out, by the way. I did not find anything out about Liz Lizette through the anime, except she's amnesic. In the visual novel, she's a split personality. She's the original, where Liz Lott is the one that actually was made by the Void Stone. The source of Liz Lott's power also helped create the personality for for Liz Lott in Liz Lizette. After some going through hell, I won't explain, but think kind of closely to sixth from Future Diaries backstory, and you'll get the the first hints of it there. Anyone that knows what I'm talking about knows this will not be pleasant to talk about and why I'm not doing so. Frankly, she, in the anime, she comes off as wasted potential because there's a lot more to her backstory than we actually know, and it is much harsher. I can see why it was abandoned in the anime, and... Probably that's for the best. Overall, waste of potential, but again, maybe that's for the best. So, let's talk about Ryoji, who's the more interesting of the two. Ryoji is the harbinger of the fall. Basically, he is the one who will summon Nyx, the main, the big bad of the game. Now... Ryoji starts out at as a creature called Death. He was sealed away into the main protagonist ten years prior to the game by Aegis because it was too powerful to be defeated. And some bits of it were split into twelve other shadows. I covered that of one a few of I mentioned them back in my original video for the villains, the first one. Now, over time he grew into another personality called Pharos, who it appears throughout the game to warn you about the coming of the shadows and when you'd have to fight them. So basically that's all he was for the first little bit. He developed his own personality and wondered a lot about life and questioned you on a lot of things. I'm not going to get into everything about it because there is I don't want to spoil everything. If you're more interested, look up the game, but he becomes one of your social links. After the 12 shadows are all defeated, he disappears, and we are introduced to the character Ryoji, who we later learn is the same person after he's basically been freed. He is also amnesic about his thing, Becomes fast friends with Junpei, has a very perverted personality similar to Junpei, and is overall just kind of a friend to most of the other characters. 
until a full moon happens and he remembers everything about what he is. He's not happy about it, to say the least. He sadly doesn't want to be the Harbinger in the Fall because of the personality the protagonist has given him, but he does not have a choice in the matter. That's destiny. He cannot go up anywhere about it. So sadly, he is the Harbinger of the Fall. Then you are given a choice between killing him or letting him live and bring about the fall. And it is your choice, the player, to either kill him or let him live. Though you have to wait a month until that actually happens. Quite frankly, it is his entire thing is tragic because... In the end, he does lose himself to be after becoming Nix's avatar. I mean, there's nothing... By the end of the game, there's nothing left of Ryoji. He's one of the other characters to technically die, though he would never lived in the first place until he was with the protagonist. In all honesty, I really like Ryoji, and think he's a very tragic villain, and very unintentional in that. And it's very clear to me who the winner is here. It is Ryoji. He has a far more interesting story to tell. And it's far better developed than Lizlot ever was. At least in my opinion. Anyways, that's all from me. And this, this has been Star 6 Wars 1. And next time when we go into Persona 3 vs. 11 Eyes, we are going with Lizlot vs. Nyx. See you guys then.